Which one? That one? Yep. There's only one button to press, really, there isn't is. there? Yeah. So. <laughs> Hi. How is everyone all right? Um, I never thought I'd be doing this. Um, I remember this time, well, it was the last one we had, the last awards we had, I remember sitting at the back of the room and watching Jamie's and thinking, I want to try and make that me one day. And uh, little did I know, the next one, the next set of awards we had, that I'd be part of that. So um, this is me, Mark, almost 42, married, been my wife 20, nearly 21 years now, you've put up with me. <laughs> yeah, three kids and now a former police officer. Um, <laughs> had you asked me who I was a year ago, I'd have said, I'm a cop. That's what I do. Who I really am is a husband, a father, a friend, a son, and now an entrepreneur. And during that time in the police, before I left, what I was, was miserable, I was tired, I was stagnant, very negative, very bored, very, very angry, crippled at one point with PTSD, couldn't leave the house. I was never present. I was always three or four steps ahead of myself, even at home. I was never at home, really, was I? Just not mentally. Um, at one point, suicidal. I was grieving the loss of my father because he died during that period. And that was all really whilst I was still serving as a police officer. So that was a very difficult time. And there was three, and this might resonate with you, there was sort of three things that I can pick up on that kind of told me I wasn't happy. One was I often felt hopeless. I often felt like there was no hope, there was no chance of change. And with that, imposter syndrome, which we're all pretty much aware of, was taken over. I just didn't feel good enough. I didn't feel like I could really follow any aspirations that I had. Um, and, and more importantly, I'd forgotten to dream. I'd forgotten to fantasise about my future, and I'd forgotten to have a goal or a, or a purpose, and I certainly had forgotten what fulfilment felt like. And, and there was something that I hit on that when I was ill and I was off ill, I had to kind of almost start coaching myself. And there was always this one phrase that I picked up on, and it sticks with me now, and it's that the desire to change has to be greater than the desire to stay the same. And you've probably heard me banging up that so many times. I know, Matt, where are you? You've heard me bang on that several times, haven't you, about the desire and stuff. And, uh, and that was a quote that I used to go on about during my very short, fleeting coaching career that um, started and finished very quickly with shift success. Um, so what did I decide business was for me? Well, the thought of leaving the police was very attractive, but the, the thought of starting a new career under someone else's rules, under someone else's direction, was actually soul-destroying. The thought of being told what to do when I had so much energy of my own actually sickened me. I couldn't bear the thought of working for another orga organisation again or somebody else. And I wanted to maximise my creativity without any boundaries. What I realised was when I was off work, I was a different person. My creativity would flood out of me. My ideas would just come to me. And when I was at work, I was sapped. I had nothing. So I wouldn't be able to tap into that creativity that was kind of hidden away. Um, and I felt like I was locked in a box in the police. I felt like every day I was in that uniform, in that station, in custody, in that car, that I, was, I felt caged. I felt like I couldn't be the person I really wanted to be. So the defining moment for me was that I decided to get serious. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> That's my favourite part of this presentation. I was so... <laughs> So pleased with myself when I did that. That man could model. Yeah, he's, he's dead hunky, isn't he? Look at him. Look. And so, <laughs> and so um, I joined Shift Success, and it, was, it wasn't really on a whim, because whilst I was off here, I'd Googled, I actually Googled um, police officer entrepreneur, and of course, Mr. Series book popped up, and, and I, I bought the book, and then I stalked Alex for a bit, um, and then I decided to to have a conversation with them. And so when I eventually did join Shift Success, um, I decided that my experiences that I'd had being off work and with PTSD and, and all the other things that I'd gone through would be a, a really good cocktail for me to be a good coach. Um, and so Man Moving Forward, which was my initial idea, was born. And that was coaching for men. And it started well. I had a few clients. Um, I somehow managed to blag my way onto podcasts. And, and even more importantly, 
I somehow got myself on a coaching program as a co-host from an American psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> the thought I was the dog's nuts. Um, <laughs> and I think it was more because she couldn't understand the Essex twang and the accent. But um, even though it was going well and I was getting some good recognition, it just didn't sit right with me. And I, and I think it, for me, it was more the longevity. The more that I felt I was current at that time, but could I be current in 10 years' time with what I was doing? I didn't feel, feel like I could be. Um, and I was starting to struggle with my niche a little bit. Um, now, whilst I was off ill, prior to that, I had this idea about cultivating grass, as in blades of grass, not weed. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and I then decided to, to fall, back at, fall back on that, because for any of you, it's okay to pivot. It's all part of the process. It's, and, and I didn't look upon my coaching spate as a failure because ironically, the most successful coaching client I ever had was myself. Because whilst I was helping other people, it was actually really cathartic for me. And um, I learned an awful lot. And so from coach, I went to lawn care specialist and the lawnologist was born. And that is actually one of the gardens I'm working on at the moment. And that was um, Brown and Patchy when I started. And that's, uh, that's been lawnologized. Um, so I provide bespoke lawn care packages, individual plans for individual lawns for individual customers. Um, and what makes me different to many other um, lawn care services is that I go with a consultative approach. So when I turn up, I'll walk the lawn with the customer, I'll do soil samples, I'll test pH levels, I'll look at the grass types, I'll look at the fungus types. And, and what I really work towards is making sure whatever happens, my customer has a, a lush, thick, green, weed and moss-free lawn. Very, very simple. Um, but very hard to achieve, actually. Um, on top of that, I do weed and moss control on lawns, um, other than lawns, also for hard services, which is an upsell for me. So whilst I'm doing a lawn care package, I then upsell a couple of hundred pound package on patios, driveways, and it's simple. The, the product costs me not a lot at all, it takes me five minutes, and it's pretty much instant profit. And I focus largely on organic and cultural methods. And I didn't realise this was going to be such USP, but people love the fact that I use organic feed. And it is really good because... Um, that also conditions the soil, which makes the grass more resilient, which then makes the lawn more resilient for the hot summers we're going into. So actually, it's a win-win. And I hadn't even thought of that, so that was a bit of a, a, bit of a bonus. Um, it, the process is very quick for me. Um, I think the idea was born in the April. Um, Stephen Nutley done my branding. My first sale was done in June. Um, and it all started with really making that mental commitment. And I thought, this is it. I'm, I'm a year into shift success. I'm starting back at scratch again. I've got no time to muck around. I'm off. I'm doing it. Um, and from there on in, it was non-stop. I was working. I was coming home. Um, I was doing modules. I sourced industry-specific training. Um, and I started to talk to people about my idea. And that was the most important thing. You know, on the modules that Alex talks about selling the idea, well, I can tell you that before I'd even taken an aerator to a lawn, I was getting people to part with £1,500 at a time just because they had confidence in me selling the idea. So June the 15th, 2022, was my first sale. It's huge. There it is. <laughs> and what was better was that this guy upsold another driveway treatment and made it into 100 quid. So I was absolutely over the moon. It was fantastic. But it was a start. And it was good practice. And I got to stretch my legs. Um, and then, so by the end of June, I'd done 1,420 pounds. By July, I'd done just under four grand in sales for the year. August, well, July, I got to the point where I was pretty much fully booked until October and I said to Lauren, oh, I can't bloody cope with this. So Lauren said, just leave the place. I was like, you are. Shoot, leave the place. So if you remember, I put a post in the group and I said, this is my dilemma. And you lot went, leave the place. <laughs> so I did. <laughs> I put my notice in. Once I put my notice in, I was then a little bit more driven. So then in August, we pulled in five grand. So, thank you. So as a part-time business owner, bearing in mind I was doing six shifts on, three off, six on, four off. Over 10 weeks, I'd made in sales 10 and a half thousand pounds. But there's more to add to that because when I put this presentation together, it was at the beginning of September, so I've been in the business full time now, 24 days. It's the 24th day, isn't it? 24 days. <laughs> and um, I'm very proud to say that in 24 days, I've added an extra nine and a half thousand pounds to my business. Yeah. 
So, so my initial investment with equipment, with training, was about 21,000. I've turned that over in three months, which I'm really pleased with. So the future's looking really bright. So I resigned on the 17th of August, 2022. <laughs> that was a good day. That was a good day. I nearly got a speeding ticket going out of the car park. Um, <laughs> and it was a brave decision. And I remember Alex saying um, on the member of the month that I'd, I'd taken a risk. And he was right, I had taken a risk. And actually, you saying I'd taken a risk put the fear of God into me. Because I said to Lawrence, he's just fucking said I've taken a risk. What's he saying that for? What's the matter, bloke? But you're right, it was a risk. But it all depends on the mindset, it's how you look at it. You saying that turned into my fuel. I had to go out, I had to go and knock on doors, I had to go and canvas. And I felt it was, it was my time to go. Um, I was fired up and I worked better under pressure. I worked better when, when the odds are stacked against me, I always have done. When it's easy, I get bored. When it's easy, I stagnate. When it's easy, I leave and I move on. Um, and I was feeling invigorated and I could taste freedom. I really could taste it and I thought, this is it, I'm done. And the initial plan was to go after Christmas and then it was to go before Christmas. And then it's like, ah, fuck it, let's just go. So I went. So my personal wins, these are my three little squibblets. This is Max, this is Joshua, and this is little Ruby. They're a bit bigger now. That's the nicest picture I could find of the three of them without one of them pulling a funny face. So my personal wins, I'm very happy now. I'm in total control of what I do. I'm not begging for leave. I'm not begging not to go to custody to interview. I'm not pulling my hair out over a CPS file. Development, I'm developing myself constantly. I'm learning something daily, whether it's in my business, out of my business, working on my business, in my bi Every day is a learning day for me, it's fantastic. I have purpose and I have fulfillment, and I'll tell you what, you don't realise what that is until you come out of the place. You don't. Um, and the biggest win for me, I think, is that I've demonstrated to my children that if things aren't right, then by God, you've got to change them. Because <laughs> nothing will change. Nothing will change until you do. Nothing will. And change is as good as anything. So, so <clears throat> for those of you who haven't left the job, I know there's a few here that have and a few that haven't, my advice would be, be vulnerable. It's not a bed of roses, it's not easy. It's not perfect, and it never will be because nothing's perfect, because that's how life is. Stop fannying around. <laughs> Where is he? Jamie, there he is. There, look, you got a little mention there. Jamie Stenton, 2021. <laughs> that, that stuck with me. That absolutely stuck with me when you said that. Lean into the process, learn and stretch yourself. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable because it is uncomfortable. It is nerve wracking. It does cause you sleepless nights. You do think, what if, what if, what if? But don't buy into them thoughts. Just don't buy into them thoughts. Just be calculated and take, sometimes take the risk. You learn to develop yourself. You learn to learn. You learn to grow. You learn to better yourself. Everyone's capable. Believe in yourself, back your dreams and take some sort of action. That's the most important thing. Even if it's a small step, do something. Every day, every week, whenever you can fit it in, do something to move that little bit closer to where you want to be. A few more things to remember. Your self-confidence is very, very important. Really important. You have to believe in yourself because let's not forget, you're all in the place. You've all, you're all doing a job, doing a role that requires so many different skill sets. The difference is, is you've normalised it and you've taken it for granted actually how much value you can bring to the world. So have confidence in yourself. Always be willing to try something new and don't worry about failure. Don't worry about judgement. Always try something new. Don't let the green grass distract you. <laughs> don't worry about the, the end goal so much because actually it's the journey and it's the territory that you navigate on, the, on that journey that really carves you as a person, as an entrepreneur. And I'm, I'm talking like I'm an old sweat, and I'm not, but I'm just talking from what I've discovered as I'm going along. And overcome perfectionism. It doesn't exist. Nothing's perfect. And I found that out. The ideas that I had when I first started have changed. My methodology has changed because I've tweaked it, I've refined it, and I'm still refining it. I'm refining my systems. But I'm moving forward. I'm a man moving forward. So here's to the future, wherever that will take us. 
The plan is Lauren will come into the business eventually. Um, Lauren's a teacher at the moment, does her head in. Um, <laughs> deals with everyone else's kids, then comes home and deals with ours. <laughs> it is hard work because we've got three little terror hawks. Um, where do I see the business going? Well, I like helping people. I, like, I do like coaching people. And I think there's an element for one-to-one -one training for ex-service people, army, police, fire service, nurses, doctors, potentially. Maybe not doctors because they probably don't need to work because they're loaded. But um, I could franchise it. I'm also considering doing an online consultancy. I had a little um, test run with Robin Waite and we've sorted his lawn out. Um, and I think there's, there's scope there as well. But for now, I'm just focusing on working in my business to know it inside out. So when I do scale it, and I will scale it, it's gonna be easier for me. So that's the plan. So with that said, that's me finished. Um, I'd just like to thank Lauren, my wife, Alex and the team, and the rest of you. Because you're all fantastic people. You've been very supportive, especially you, Jonesy. And uh, I can't thank you enough. So thank you very much. Thank you, mate. Thank you, mate. Thank you very much. Yeah.